Hey everybody, this is round two of my playthrough of Rise of the Rune Lords Burnt Offerings with the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. We have closed the location of Swallowtail Festival. That's done. That means that the villain cannot be in, the, in that location, nor can the villain run to that location should we encounter the villain at any point. Which, I mean, we will eventually. So now we have to make a choice of what location to go to next. And I'm going to look, I mean, the, the rule book states that it is not metagaming. I mean, it doesn't say it in that, those terms, but it's, it, it's, it advises you to take a look at the locations and consider which one is best to go to. So this isn't an RPG, this is a board game, or, well, it's a card game. Using the information printed is, is not a bad thing. So the town square, at this location, you may discard a card from your hand to explore during your turn. This card may not be recharged. So that's kind of interesting, but I doubt I'm going to be doing that. Discarding a card from their draw deck to explore more? No way. That's too expensive for my blood. Um, and then in Sandpoint Cathedral, it says, at this location, defeat a monster, add a blessing from your discard pile to your hand. That's nice. So instead of losing cards, we, we could potentially gain cards. That feels like an early game sort of advantage. Uh, and then finally, the gate. At that location, if you fail a combat check, shuffle a random monster from the box into the location deck. So that's just going to build up potentially more of what we have to go up against. I'm feeling like the Sandpoint Cathedral might be the way to go. In the At the end of the previous episode... I think I was kind of favoring, from a story perspective, going to the town square, because I was feeling like that just makes sense. You're at the Swallowtail Festival, you close that location down, you kind of end up in the town square. But at the same time, I think from a lore perspective, if we care, which, I mean, the game doesn't care. So from the lore perspective, uh, it does kind of make sense to to end up in the cathedral, because the Swallowtail Festival is on, is 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 centered around the consecration of the new cathedral. The fact that it is now burning because of goblin, uh, a goblin invasion or, or attack is, is a big deal, and we would want to go there, I would think, to rescue that. So that makes sense. In the previous round, you noticed that I forgot to do some things, including I forgot to roll for defeating after, after Sioni defeated the goblin raider henchman because we were at because we're playing attack on sandpoint there is a global rule that states if defeated uh, roll a d6 and on a 1 everyone takes 1 point of damage so i'm going to do that now that's a 4 not a 1 so no one takes damage so that's resolved the other problem that i i noticed and put a little title card in the video about was that i had discarded a bunch of cards for sioni forgetting that there was that that there could have been a better strategy around that, but I mean that's happened. That was a choice that I made. It was a bad choice, uh, and so I'm going to just keep going from from here. So it's Valeros's turn. Of course, the first thing we have to do is flip over a blessing or a, a one of the cards in our timer deck. That's now done, and now Valeros can first of all look at his hand and give something to Sioni if if. Uh, if, if it makes sense for her to have something. It doesn't really, so he's not going to give her any cards. And instead, he's going to move up to this location. Let's read the flavor text of the Sandpoint Cathedral. The Sandpoint Cathedral is the grandest building in the town. Sandpoint's new cathedral is dedicated to the six deities worshipped by the town's founders, including Abadar, Desna, Erastal, Gozra, Saren Ray, and Shaylin. And of course, again, if we defeat a monster here, then we get to take a blessing from your discard pile and put it back into your hand. Now, I'm going to look in Valeros's discard pile. He has only discarded one card, so he's in really good shape. And one of those is a blessing, so... I guess it makes sense for him to just start exploring this location. And that's what he'll do. So he turns over the first card. 
It is not a combat card. It is an ally. That's some, somewhat dis uh, unfortunate. I think um, Sioni is better suited to acquire allies than Valeros, but uh, we can do this anyway. And so he can use a, dis a diplomacy check, and if he gets a six, then he acquires that ally into his hand. And if we look at his character card, uh, he has a diplomacy bonus of a plus two, and he rolls a d6. So getting a six is possible, and then he also has a plus two. So really, he's only rolling for a four. He got a six, so he acquires this ally. Let's look at this ally's abilities really quick. So she can help. She can. We can recharge this card to add a d10 to a survival check. My problem with that is that there just isn't that much survival, I don't think. I mean, unless we come, come up with a uh, up against a barrier that specifically requires a um, a survival check, I don't feel like this is all that useful. In fact, neither of Valeros's uh, allies right now, the Night Watch, helps with perception. And this guy, it helps with survival. I just don't think in this setting, just from my experience, those aren't super useful. And because I'm eternally concerned about the timer deck, now remember, we, we have three more locations to search, and each of them certainly have probably about 10 cards in them. We don't have 30 cards in our timer deck, so we're going to run out of timer cards before we exhaust all of the locations. And... Adding to that, at the end of Valeros's turn, he has to discard down to his hand size of four. So one of these has to go away. So I may as well pick one. Um, I don't know which one to pick, because I don't know what's going to be more useful, perception or survival. So I'm going to pick one at random. Okay, so he's keeping his new ally, discarding the old, and then he's going to explore again. And... This is great. This is exactly what I wanted. So this is a monster at the cathedral. I don't know how a boar got into the cathedral or why it's hanging around a burning cathedral, but it is there and it is attacking Valeros. He needs to go into combat and he needs an eight or better. Uh, well, his combat die, as we'll, as, as you probably remember, as you may remember, is a d10. Um, he has a bonus to his melee attacks, which is a plus three, and his com his strength is d10, so that's how I'm getting the d10, plus three. And then he could also use a weapon that he does not even need to discard. He just reveals the weapon to gain a d8. I mean, this guy is a tank. So he's got plus three, so we can just effectively say that he needs a five. He needs to roll a five on a d8 and a d10. Nothing's ever ever guaranteed. Okay, that's that's pretty good. 18. Well, that's a success. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Before the encounter, succeed at a wisdom or survival check, or the difficulty to defeat this increases by 10. Well, he already defeated it anyway. I mean, that that, that doesn't change anything because he got an 18. But I am kind of curious. And remember how I was saying survival wasn't that big of a deal. Well, we could recharge this card to add a d10 to survival. And I'm actually going to voluntarily, I'm going to do that as a way to cycle in more cards into Valeros's deck. Because recharging is like gold. You're not discarding it. You're just putting it at the bottom of your draw deck. So no health has been lost. Uh, but he gets a d10 to his survival. What did he need to survive on the, or to succeed? Uh, seven. So that fails. So technically he needs a, he needed a 10 to defeat the boar. Well, he got an 18, so, um, so he defeated the boar no matter what. We could have added another eight to the difficulty and he would still beat the boar. So we're, we're okay. Now, because he defeated a monster in the cathedral, he gets to look through his discard deck and add a blessing back into his hand. So that would be here. 
straight back into his hand. And that gives him that gives him two blessings, a tool, an item, and a weapon. I still would feel a little bit better if he had a some armor, but he doesn't. Now I could just keep bleeding the encounter and discard one of these two blessings. And I'm tempted to do that, but honestly, I don't feel that pressured, and I I, I want to keep I want to keep him healthy, so I think I'm just going to switch over now to Sioni's turn. So Sioni's going to join him in the cathedral. Why not? We'll turn over a timer card for her. I don't think she has any cards to give to him. No, I don't feel like any of these cards. Maybe the guard. Uh, that's not very useful, actually. Yeah, so I don't think she needs to give him anything. She's well positioned, though, for whatever is going to happen. And what's going to happen is a blessing. So this is a blessing of Torag, which is a very strong dwarven god. She could do a strength check to acquire this. Her strength is a d4. So chances are pretty slim that she's going to acquire this. This really would have gone... This would have been better for for Valeros to try to acquire that. She rolled a 1, so that's that's not a success. But according to the rules, your ally in the same location can attempt a check for a card. I'm going to verify that right now. But to my memory, that is correct. It's just as long as, as long as the character who drew the card attempts the check, then someone else is able to attempt as well. If if the character who drew the card cannot attempt the check, then neither can an ally in the same location, or I should say a PC, because an ally is a card type. Yeah. So according to the rules here. Any character at that location can attempt one or more of the checks as long as the character who encountered... Oh, the Bane. That This is not a Bane. This is a blessing, or a boon, rather. I mean, it's a blessing, but it's considered a boon. Each boon has a check... has a section called Check to Acquire. This section indicates the skills that can be used to acquire. If multiple checks are listed or the or with the or, you can do either or. If you succeed at the check, put the card into your hand. If you fail, banish the card. Okay, well, that seems pretty clear, actually. So, I was wrong. He cannot attempt to a check to get that. I guess that makes sense. I mean, otherwise you would just cycle through your entire party until someone succeeded. Uh, okay, so that was her turn. Is she going to discard? Is she going to discard? Is she going to discard? She could discard a blessing. To continue to check. She's discarded a lot and she hasn't gained really anything yet. I think I'm just going to pass her turn over to Valeros. We're going to increment the timer deck. It's Valeros's turn, so he's going to explore. So Blessing, he automatically receives this Blessing. So great, that's in his hand, but the, you know, it's both a Blessing and a Curse, I guess, because now he's got five cards. He has to discard down to four cards at the end of his turn, so that's a little bit difficult, uh, all things considered. So I guess I'm going to discard a Blessing, because it's better to uh, willingly discard a card than to discard it and get nothing back. So that's been discarded, which of course means, because I did that as part of his turn, he gets to explore again. Oh, this is good, actually. So this is a henchman. This is uh, the named henchman, Suto Kaijitsu. And that means two things. It means, first of all, that the villain is not in this deck. And of course, because it's a, it's a henchman, so after we defeat this, we'll be able to close this location. And we'll also get to get one of those blessings back into Valeros' deck, I guess. Although, I mean, I guess not, because he's not a monster. He's a henchman. So yeah, I guess you don't get the blessing for that. 
Still, this could be good. I mean, it is good. This guy has a 10 to defeat him. The difficulty of this check, of checks to defeat Suto with the attack or ranged trait is increased by 2. The difficulty of checks to defeat with the attack or ranged. Well, I'm assuming that a longsword has the attack. No, it doesn't. does not have the attack trait. That's interesting. It's blurry as well. Yeah, okay, so I guess... Um, I mean, I'm not seeing... Well, well, we'll see how we roll. It might not even matter. I won't obsess over the wording quite yet. So, again, this is Valero. So he's got a d10 for strength. So he gets 3 for his melee, a d10 for this, and then all he has to do is reveal his longsword in order to earn an extra d8 to his check. So, 3... Uh, so we're, we're looking for... I don't know. We're looking for something above t uh, 10 or above. So that's a 5 on the d8 and a 3 on the d10. This could be kind of bad in a way um, because that's 8, 9, 10, 11. And it says that difficulty to defeat this card increased by 2 with the attack or ranged traits. I do not see attack listed here and for instance like if we find this is technically cheating because now i'm going to know the order of his cards oh and it's okay well it was very cheating because um he doesn't have a ranged i was going to try to find something with a trait that would have yeah okay so here's here's i think proof enough the force force missile clearly says attack right there in the trait list here Magic, Arcane, Attack, Force, Basic. Which leads me to believe that for whatever reason, a longsword does not have the attack trait. And obviously it's not ranged, which a like a bow or a crossbow would have ranged. So I think we're... And I, I would think that actually the attack missile, Force Missile, would should also have ranged. But I guess it doesn't. Interesting. Okay. I guess you can Force Missile someone not ranged as well maybe that's why um but i feel pretty confident that that's that that means that melee does not get that increased by two claws therefore an 11 to defeat a 10 does in fact defeat this henchman if defeated you may immediately attempt to close this location so we look at the location card when closing banish either a blessing or father xantus well, we don't have Father Xantus. It feels like a weird assumption that that would even be a thing. But, okay, so we have to banish a Blessing of the Gods. Like I say, easy come, easy go with blessings. So I'm putting that back in the box. That's what banishing means. And this is now a closed location. Now, the thing about closing a location is, I mean, you get... It's a benefit because now that's one, two, three, four, five cards that we know are not the villain and therefore we don't have to expend a timer card to uncover them if we don't want to of course then again there is that clause in the in the location if you defeat a monster here you can add a blessing so you can actually rescue something from your discard pile but I feel like in order to get through five cards, I mean, we're going to have to tick down a number of timers or discard cards to explore. So I think it's just, it's, I think it's smarter to close this location and just forget it. So now I think we're going to just head over maybe to the town square. And I guess I'm, I'm thinking that just kind of because it feels like that's the correct order to ramp up the the dangers um but anyway that's three cards in his hand so he has to draw up one so he now has a dagger as well still no armor um which is really i don't know uncomfortable i would i would really like for him to have armor uh, i know he's got armor it's just he doesn't have it in his hand and that's somewhat disconcerting but um up next is going to be sioni and so that's where we'll start with the next round.
in the next video. Thanks for watching.